Today, we're going to look at Dakadin's updated implementation of Rollmaster Classic on the Fantasy Grounds Classic client. And today we're going to do a quick fight, a nice simple fight. Remember, when you get started, make sure that you've got all your modules loaded. That's not just for the GMs, for the players too. Otherwise, there's some things like modifiers and effects may not be available. To do that, remind you, it's into Options, Setup, go into Next, and then go and check whatever modules you want to do. So the Core Rules, for example, or all the rules, just make sure they're loaded. As a reminder, two previous videos, we created two level one characters, a spell user and a non-spell user. We have Bob the Fighter here, who is a shapeshifter. Not gonna cover that today. From a multicultural, multilinguistic background. And then we have Virila, a magic user, a magician, seven foot six inches tall, 236 pounds, superior strength, plus 20 strength bonus, but weirdly, eight hits. I don't know if that's a definition of a glass cannon or not. But one hit from anything really, and she's going to go down. I'm going to have Virula played on my laptop, simulating a player, and I'm going to take over Bob. The laptop itself has got a reasonably low resolution screen, and I normally play on two screens as a GM client, so that's why you'll see me juggling a lot of windows. Normally wouldn't have this. My combat trackers, uh, table resolvers, all that kind of stuff would be on the right hand screen, and the left hand screen is what I normally try and replicate what a player would see. Anyway, let's get to it. So we've got an image here. I've cut it down, made it smaller to make it a bit simpler. First thing we're going to do is pop a grid on it. By the way, the stuff I'm going to touch on, I will do videos, or there are other videos out there already, which show you how to do these things in more detail. I'm just going to quickly skip through, because I just want to show you the overview of it. So I'm just going to mouse wheel in. I want to set myself a grid size here to put a grid over the top of this. So right hand click, layers, set grid square, pop it down, and try and get it as best you can. I'm going to put a 25, let go, there's the grid on it, coming back out again. Pop a mask on, right hand click, layers, mask. In it goes. If you just use the left hand mouse button, you can uncover little rectangles. If you make a mistake, hold the control key down, draw it, and you can bring the mask back up again. I'm going to use the shift key down, and I'm just going to draw what the characters could see. So shift key down, left hand mouse button, drawing just on the edges of the forest, round the back, along here if they go down there. And they'll probably see as far as that if they're looking down the track and then back up here, and that should be about as much as they can see. Right, now, combat tracker, make sure they're on there. Just gonna grab Bob, Bob can be at the front, Virla slightly behind, Let's zoom in again, make sure she's a bit closer, back out. Then, I've got an account ready already. It's uh, about a rabid alpaca, they've been asked by the local village to go and clear the ford here of a rabid alpaca. Little first level adventure, very simple. Uh, drag this across, drop it in, it appears on there, already set up. Encounters another video, we can do it another time, but just quickly inside there. So there's the alpaca there. Along they come, talking to themselves, not particularly watchful. Let's get them to make perception rolls. So if I show you on Virula, Tara down here, going into skills. Assign a difficulty, so plus or minuses. It was easy. I'll say it's easy. And then all I need to do then is just roll perception. If I double click on those gray dice, that's going to put it in the open, but we want to do it in the tower. So I'll let go. That rolls it. As far as Virila's player is concerned, they rolled it. We look back here on the GM screen, they can see what the tower was. It was a 37, so that's he's clueless. And then I'm just going to do the same thing for Bob. Easy perception. 95. Okay, so Bob realises something's up. He hasn't made a complete 101 plus, but he knows something's up, so they skid to a halt, look down the track, can't see how you wouldn't see an alpaca, so I'm going to go to the combat tracker, show that it can now be seen by saying show NPC, and now they can see it. If we now share that, because I haven't shared it, have I? So go to share, click on share sheet, we'll swap over to Virula's player, you can see it loads up a mask. It's quite slow at first, then it shows the mask. Like that. Now, well, let's scoot back here. I'm going to right hand click on a token, and I'm going to say, well, that's, on, that's actually locked at the moment, but if I right hand click, I'm going to lock the tokens. It means that, as me as a GM, I can pull them around. 
But if you go back to Virula's one, Virula tries to move herself now, forward. It won't move until I go back to the GM screen, right hand click and say, accept that move. And then she can move. Let's go into combat rounds. To combat tracker, it's at round five at the moment. Uh, I can set it to round zero. So next round for round one. And then I'm gonna roll her bees initiative. Initiative, roll all in it. So alpaca first. Make a quick roll for the alpaca. See if it spots them. 44, perception of 20, 64. It's got its back to them at the moment. So we'll say it doesn't know something at the moment. Something prickles it. It thinks something's going on, but maybe the, the rabid disease going through it means it's not quite aware yet. So that's this one done. Next actor then, Virula. She says to Bob, bring it here. Shoot, shoot a bow at it if you can, and I'll put it asleep. Then we can try and hit it while it's gone to sleep. So she starts preparing a spell. Bob, Bob takes out his composite bow, makes sure there's the strings on it. Now, if you hold your both mouse buttons down, left and right, if you're on the PC, you can keep it down, let go, gives you the range there. I suppose I better show you how to target. So click once on who you want to be the targeter, then go to the target, hold the control key down, and click. There's other ways of doing it. GM can do it by unlocking a toolbar and going into target mode and then target them for you, but just keep it for the players. Click on yourself first, click on what you want to target with the control key down. Easy or simple that. So 185 feet, looking at Bob's Bob's attack, composite bow, what's the range on it? Up to 200 feet, minus 35. So does he want to fire now at minus 35? Wait for it to get within 100. Let's fire once now at minus 35. Into the modifiers, negative 35 for range. So target there is an unidentified creature. Terrible name. Give it a name like um, long-necked goat. So the target's a long-necked goat. And then we can double click, and here's when the magic happens. Table resolver, right? So it's targeted the long net goat. It already knows it's AT3. If I right hand click and say resolve, cross reference it with the AT, the armor type, and then with the roll, it's taken into account his armor penalty, his offensive bonus, the modifier for range we put on, which I probably could have put there, and then its defensive bonus. As you can imagine, that's a nothing going on there. So it shoots harmlessly short, wide, long, don't know. But it's the next round. Long let go. Now with a big, big plus. No, something's up. So it's going to turn around, go something like, yeah! and then runs crazily 100 feet. 100 feet's about there by the looks of it. Now, oh, by the way, if you draw a pointer, so just click once on the left and right mouse buttons again, just to get rid of it. Right, now. Screen real estate can be a problem, so I'm going to bring this in a bit. Give myself a bit more room. On Virula's screen, do the same, which I probably haven't shown you. That's Alpaca's turn. Next actor, Virula. So this is the second round of prep for Virula. So she's going to move just slightly behind Bob, towering her behind him. He's 5 foot 10, she's 7 6, so she's nearly 2 foot above him anyway, but she's behind him holding a quarterstaff in one hand and making a lot of noise. He's gesturing flamboyant gestures and incantations to be able to get those modifiers, which does make her stick out a bit, like a sore thumb, as if the 7 foot 6 didn't anyway. Bob has a decision to make now. Does he shoot another what, a go, or does he wait? And I think what he does is he tosses a composite bow to one side, hand axe, full shield, waits to meet the charge of the rabid alpaca. Next round. Didn't roll initiatives last round, did I? So initiative, roll all initiatives. Bob's going first, the goat, then Virula. So Bob delays his action. Now you see it keeps snapping, by the way. So whose go it is? That can be annoying for some people. Uh, definitely for me. So I go to options. It's client. Turn auto sensor map on. No, turn it off. Right, I didn't accept her move, by the way. So let's accept her move. Right, long neck goat. 85 feet and does make a charge as well. 75 for the charge, and then makes a medium bash charge attack. Uh, what's her target? So what's the alpaca's target is Bob. Now it's coming a lot more. I'm just mouse wheeling in. Because I can make a bit more space that way. Oh, 
right, we'll pop that there. I'll do the same on Virulas. Right, long neck goat. Targeted Bob, off you go. Make your medium charge. Oh, 93, it's not bad. Right hand click resolve. But, oh, what's happened? It was the Monega 75, unfortunately. Oh, that's a real shame, because that could have been a good hit on Bob. But not this time. Unlucky. Right, next actor is Virula. She's allowed to cast now. She's been doing flamboyant gestures. Let's pop over to her screen. So, let's make sure. Click once. Control key. Click. That's now been targeted. I haven't got the combat tracker up, so I'm going to bring it up by the cross swords. Bring up her attacks with a sword. Give me a base attack. Now I'm going to add some modifiers in here. So nothing like that's going to help. But there is going to be some spell incantations because she was gesturing wildly, gesticulating wildly. So go down to spells. Find spells base. There you go. Flamboyant gestures. Flamboyant incantations. Each time I'm clicking on those, it's adding it into the modifier. And then time to make my base spell attack. So off we go. Ooh, it's nice and high. Move that out of the way. 97. Oh dear, that's night night for this alpaca, I believe. So right hand click, resolve. Minus 55. Right hand click, RR table. So it's got to get 40 or above. But let's be fair, it's minus 55, so I, let's say it's going to get 95 and above. So basically open-ended, otherwise it's going to sleep. 51, so it fails by 40. Now it's a normal sleep, not a magical sleep it says. It will fall down to sleep, and then if it gets hit it's going to wake up again. Just like you and I would. So as it falls to the ground, it's a new round. New initiative. Long neck goats are asleep, so it's Bob. Bob here takes out his flail, goes round to the rear, and gets ready to hit it. Virula takes out her quarterstaff, go back to her screen, and she goes round to the back to hit it. I'll accept her move. Zoom in on Virula's screen. So they get one crack each before it comes up. So it's the next round. Menu, initiatives, roll initiatives. Fast asleep. So it's Bob up first. Modifiers for Bob is... Oh, now hang on, let's put some effects on Long Neck Go because it's asleep. It's a little figure here. I'm going to grab sleeping, drag, drop it on top of it. I'm going to grab prone, because it's now on the ground sleeping. Drag it and drop it on top of it. That's the effects now. Bob, he's got some modifiers. He's taken up position in the rear flank. There might be some combat in here. Hard, soft cover. I'm not going to get any quickness bonus, so there'll be no DB for this thing. So I think that's it. So he's now going to roll his flail attack. Here we go. Oh, hang on. There is one. It's helpless, isn't it? Because it's asleep downed or helpless so he gets the first hit once it starts moving on Virula's go it's going to be downed but he gets the helpless one so there's a plus onto that look at the 50 modifier goes up now we're going to roll the attack have a flail rabbit alpaca not brilliant right hand click resolve what I'm going to do here I'm going to take his defensive bonus off because he couldn't move so I'll take the tick out you see it's at 107 at the moment take that away so now 127, 28E crush. Dragging the damage, holding it down. Just drop it on top of the name. Boom, 28 hits. And then E crush, just right hand click. Choose E. Roll your D100, Bob. Oh, it's a 90. <laughs> no, it's a quick combat. Drop that in. Next strike shatters bonus seven an artery. Foe cannot breathe and is inactive for 12 rounds. Poor fall then expires. Drag that, drop it on. It's all on there now, all those effects. Next actor, just give Virula a go anyway. Rear flank, downed, quarter staff, 151, right hand click, resolve. We're going to take the quick the DB off. 
and that is a 33e crush so we'll drag that down 61 is now dead or unconscious right hand click e roll her critical that's a 65 or one off that's the forearm smacked or one of its legs smacked drag that drop it on that's it that is a x alpaca <laughs> dead well done that's their first mission let's give them some xp so i go into the party sheet party sheets where all the people live all they can see all their stats go to the inventory checking this alpaca they find this strange co color on it leather thong black stone on it black and silver flex click on this it's worth 20 silver pieces a leather necklace if he wants it you can assign it to somebody you can say here virula you can have it or maybe an easier way say hey virula Going to Vera's thing. That's yours now. So Vera goes to her cat, goes to hers, goes to her inventory, grabs the party sheet up, because you can grab it as well. Sees the colour stone, see they see something different. Been assigned to her. Great. So you can just drag it if she wants, go to inventory. Just drop it in. It's hers now. See it appears up, peers off, it's gone. Back to the main one. There was some XP to give for this from my GM view. They survived the alpaca fight. Big milestone thing, 880 XP. Also, the actual encounter surf itself was worth 120. Though really, first time we've ever done that five times, that's where we're going to give them for a thousand for all of this all together. All I do is award them XP for the encounter. Put a little tick in that. Award them for the part of the quest they've done. They survived the alpaca fight. And you see there in the chat, it's given that all over. Remember, he shows you the, the collar with the stone was given to Rilla. 60 XP was split. The 880 was split between the two party members. And if we even check their character sheets, it's all been added up there. Look at her inventory. Collar with a stone. There it is. That's it. Not particularly quick, but a quick overview. As I said, I'll be going into these in a little bit more detail in future. Thanks very much for listening. Cheers. Bye.